I have been using the back seat of my pickup truck as my test bench when testing out subwoofers. And this is a horrible way to get good sound, good sound quality or SPL or anything. Putting a subwoofer on the back seat of a vehicle is about one of the worst things you can do. So dumb. Oh, it's so dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb. Today, I have to begin the big process of taking the back seat out and laying down some type of flat platform back here so that I can really turn this thing into a great test bench for you. I'm, that's why I'm doing this, for you. So let's take a look under here and see what we've got. Underneath this, we have two amplifiers, a digital signal processor, and a spot for a third amplifier. The subwoofer amplifier is out at the moment. This used to have an underseat box in it that's been long gone, and I'd intended to build a fiberglass box, but never got around to it. What I've gotta do now is I have to remove the seat belts, and that will allow me to slide the amp rack out, disconnect a few speaker wires, and then I've gotta remove the seat belt me uh, mechanism for the center seat belt, and I should be able to pull the seat out. When I built this amp rack, it was my first attempt at clean wiring. I made one mistake that derailed everything. I ran the RCA and speaker wires from the front to the back. The right way to do it is to wire everything on a bench, install the amp rack, and then run all the wires from the amp rack in the back up to the front. With that seat belt removed, all I need to do is unbolt the seat. I'm gonna loosen the bolts with a regular ratchet and then hit them with an electric ratchet. Now I've just gotta do that three more times and slide the back seat out. These right here are the latches for child seats. So I'll pop them off because I'll need to get them off to get to the back wall eventually. But now what you've got are three bolt holes so that you can secure your back wood panel to the vehicle itself. So that'll come in handy later. I have no idea how to get this off. So maybe I'll try my motivator here if that helps. Ah, the motivator did the job. Before I go any further, I'm going to disconnect the battery. I should have done this first. While I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the zero gauge wire that's running to the amp rack, and I'm gonna install an excess power battery that I picked up from Down for Sound. And through the power of editing magic, the excess power is in. So the problem with uh, using a daily driver as your project car is you have to drive it daily. I've got a minute to work on it, so I'm gonna take that minute and see if I can get some work done. You should always dress professionally before you do this kind of stuff. What I did was I took the seat out and I put the amp rack back in so that I could drive and have some tunes. It's a lot easier to get the amp rack out now that I don't have to fight with the seat and I disconnected the main power line from the battery. So I shouldn't have any juice back here. I'm gonna grab a multimeter and verify that. So it's important to get a multimeter. Here's an inexpensive one. This is Tessman. You can get this on Amazon. What I like about this one, even though it's not like a full featured multimeter, it's kind of idiot proof in that it's auto selecting. So it automatically selects between AC voltage, DC voltage, or continuity. It's also got a little flashlight and you could use it as a non-contact voltage tester if you're doing work in the house. All right, so to get it out of the car, I have to unhook the amplifier speaker cables here and here and the RCAs. Then I need to come out here and take out this power wire and this ground wire. Okay, I've got the amp rack out and on the workbench for easy disassembly. Everything here is either gonna go in storage for a future project or it's gonna get reused on the rebuild.
Now the plan for the rebuild is to use a pair of JP84s and a JP23 along with a mini DSP 8x12 for signal processing. That's going to give me enough channels to do pretty much anything that I want with this system. I'm going to combine that with some of these custom speaker pods from customspeakerpods.com. That way I can easily swap out speakers and subwoofers in order to test them here on the channel. Okay, everything's out of the way and now I'm going to remove the seat belts and the factory trim on the C pillar. The plan is to add some additional sound deadening back behind all that factory trim and up and down the C pillars. And while I'm taking all that apart, I want to say thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. I couldn't do this without the support of these guys right down here. I don't want to give a special bonus shout out to the $25 patrons, Bo, David T, Bam Bam, Dylan, and Baba. Now on the back wall, there are these two metal bars. These hold the rear seat back in position. A lot of people will mount amplifiers behind the back seat on that rear wall. If you take these off and then flip them over and reinstall them, you can fold down the rear seat in order to access your amplifiers without having to take the back seat out. So I went ahead and took off the factory piece right here and I had some sound editing here already, some mass loaded vinyl. Had some mass loaded vinyl and closed cell foam down on the floor. I've pulled that off as well. And so now there's a couple of things I need to do. One, I need to clean. And two, I need to go ahead and just do a full baked potato. And before I do that, I need to cover this hole that's been left behind after I pulled out that seat belt ratchet. All right, so I don't know how well this is going to work, but I took some of my NBX material. This is the stuff with the butyl and the foam and placed it on a piece of plastic and it's, it's pretty dead. Just the difference in the weight and the resonance. And I'm going to use the previous existing seatbelt bolt to bolt this in and kind of cover that hole. What I've done here is I have taken a Sharpie and I have marked the holes where I think I'm going to need to get a panel clip in so that I know when it's time to put sound deadener on and I don't need to cover these up. Okay, so somehow I didn't capture any footage of the sound deadening process, the full baked potato on the back wall. It's finished and now it's time to do a little test to show you what different types of sound deadening material can do. I got this little SPL meter right here from Parts Express. We're going to do a loop and take a reading. This material that I'm using when we do the whole full baked potato, this butyl stuff with the foil is a vibration dampener. The purpose of this material is to cut down the noise that's associated with vibrating panels. If you want to reject noise, you have to use a product called mass loaded vinyl. So if you're trying to get your car quiet, you want to add mass. All right, I'm back from a quick loot. Our maximum DB was 83 even, never getting above 50 miles an hour on some very busy back roads. I can tell you that it sounded terrible. It was far too loud for a daily driver. So the next stage is to add some mass loaded vinyl. In fact, I'm just gonna replace the mass loaded vinyl that I had to begin with. And now that I've got these sides exposed, see if I can get some mass loaded vinyl up into the C pillars. Okay, I'm wearing a different shirt so you can tell it's a different day. I didn't get any footage of the process where I put the NVX sound deadening on the back wall and the floor. And also didn't get you any footage from where I replaced my original sound dampening, the mass loaded vinyl and closed cell foam. My intention was to get a measurement so I can give you a before and after and you can see the difference. 82.4 is my measurement, but it's not valid. I was driving down the road and some guy in a Mustang with a loud exhaust passed me. So I've got to reset it and redo my entire loop. Let's see how we did. 
71 dB. So the mass loaded vinyl rejected 12 dB of road noise. Now it's never gonna be as quiet as a luxury car, but I need to get the road noise down to the point where I can stand to drive the darn thing. I've still got some more material to add to the back. I wasn't able to get the D pillars covered, for example, and I've got some stuff that's supposed to do a great job absorbing sound. By the time I add all that, plus the flat floor and the flat wall to mount the subwoofer box, it'll probably be a whole lot quieter. If you want to see that, you got to hit the subscribe button. I'm Justin, the DIY Audio Guy, and I'll see you on the next adventure.